Good evening. So welcome to fifth day of the second week, right? Now, technically, for physiology, today is the last day. Tomorrow, you'll be having your exam. And, and from 50, can I raise the questions to 60? Because as I was just thinking about all the topics, say 50 would be a bit of injustice. So can I raise the questions to 60 questions, right? Where you'll be given about 45 minutes, in some cases one minute, right? So within the span of about 45 minutes, we'll be able to finish the exam, 45 to 50 minutes, right? And then we'll discuss about it. But if we'll be having 60 questions, then we'll be able to justify almost all the topics from day one to day five. That is, I'm talking about second week. So is 60 questions okay? Great. Very nice. All right. So, and one more thing. I'll be updating all, all of the videos with, with the details of that, what exactly is into that particular. Very nice. Uh, you should give us one day to study. Well, I am giving you five days to study, right? Because see, technically speaking, first day, so then you'll be having five days for that. Second day, you'll be having another four days to study that. Anna? <laughs> say, don't worry. Even, even, yeah. Say, even if you just appear for the exam, you'll learn so much, right? Because this is, this is like an honest test. And why I'm not giving any break in between that I really want to develop a discipline in all of you. Say, sometimes when it is said that, that the students, you'll be competing with all the students, those who scored 90%, 95%, 98%, right? All those, you'll be competing with all of them when it will come to actual finals, you know? So in such cases, you need to be very sharp right from the beginning. So the way we eat every day, the way we breathe every day, exactly the same way. This is something like food for your brain. And, and if you actually see those PDFs, right, it won't take much time if you read every day. If you follow that, that just before few minutes you go to sleep and as you wake up, you just scroll through that entire PDF and see the difference. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's what I'm telling. I'll be putting more in, uh, no, Sunday, Sunday, I, I really want to give off to you also and to me also. Right. So Sunday, uh, we are studying, yeah, yeah, we are studying other subjects too. We are, I think I'm watching you for the first time. That's why. But as I said, that will be studying biochemistry from the next week. Then there will be pathology, there will be pharmacology, right? All the way to surgery, medicine, obstetric gynec, all, all such top, all the subjects, right? For 10 weeks, I have planned very properly, whether you are in first semester or you are in fourth year, but there is something for everyone, right? And don't feel so that if you are in first semester and then straight away when we'll be discussing about medicine will you be able to understand definitely you'll be able to understand because the foundation is what we are laying right now so when it will come to medicine we'll be talking about all the endocrinal diseases but along with the management and the diagnosis because it will be based on pathology the pathology will be the variation from the physiology so right now what you learned in this week is a normal thing in pathology, we'll be learning about the abnormalities, what can really go wrong, right? And in medicine, when the patient comes to you, he will not say that, okay, I'm having some problem in, in say, aldosterone. No, no, he won't say like that, right? But it is like when he comes, he'll be coming up with some, some complaints. So then what should be your approach? See, that's the beauty of entire thing, that how to decipher, how to eliminate that, okay, he is not having this disease, he is having either two of them. Then if, 
it is not possible to do it clinically then you will be ordering some investigation but when you send him for some investigation it is in your mind that whether the level of that alkaline phosphate is whether it is high or low so when the report comes immediately you will say okay just tell me the value and and immediately it will click okay, okay it is this disease what we are talking about right so that is the process which i really want to develop in you otherwise say there is everything is given in books that uh, okay you pick up any of the disease and there's just signs symptoms there is that everything is given what's new in that but when it comes to patient right it is exactly like say in cricket when you are on stumps right when you are batting you don't know what type of ball will be right it is like at that point you have to take the decision but exactly the same way you will be learning that skill sets about how to diagnose that's why we are doing all these exercise okay anatomy of lower limb uh well that is in plan that is in plan but because see right now this series is going on i'll come up with something right i i do have that thing uh but uh, gentlemen it is like say i i might be starting lower limb bit late because i actually for anatomy say we have got the entire series of upper limb now upper limb is is very closely associated with thorax so if you shift from upper limb to thorax it becomes much easier then you track all the blood vessels down to aorta i mean i mean down to abdomen so that aorta which is like from thoracic to abdominal so then it will give you a link that okay these were the things which were in abdomen uh, which were in thorax now they are in abdomen from abdomen you go to pelvis right and then it divides and then all the way it goes to lower limb right so if you follow that order your brain will will actually create the internal picture in in, in by itself and finally the the super part of the body head and neck and the brain right so they they are completely different entity because it is a small space and in which all the structures are arranged in three dimension so when it comes to head and neck if you are comfortable with rest of the body you'll find that understanding head and neck becomes much easier and and brain it is purely like a mathematics it is like an electronic circuit right so there would be lots of logic that whether the current is going from here or it will be stopped over here and what would really happen right okay so that's how many questions for tomorrow that's right that's what i was selling ankit uh 60 questions and regarding the books well you decide i think we can instead of keeping a separate day of it we can plan it in this way say on on any of the day next week right we'll we'll try to finish by 9 o'clock and then from 9 to 9:30 we'll talk about the books okay we'll next week so we'll surely take that because this books part is pending since long and in fact i'm getting so many messages also uh, in in email also so surely next week on any of the day will will settle that part okay all right so let's move on to our today's topic which is gonadal hormones right you know this part right and we move on to our today's topic so our today's topic gonadal hormone so that means we'll be dealing with testosterone and estrogen and progesterone interestingly it would happen like so many things would be repeated today so many things you'll you'll feel kare abhi this thing was done yesterday only yes but still it will be done today so that you know that that's how very intricately the entire endocrine system is connected how beautifully everything is interconnected in a very synchronized way okay all right so 
now if you guys permit so should i turn the chat off or should i keep it on right because today it seems everything so cool so i don't feel like turning the chat off because if if the chat the chat is off i feel like that i'm i'm talking alone when when there is that list is there so i feel yes 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 you guys are with me right so so i think you are so disciplined to let it let it remain on no problems okay so here we start with our today's topic the first topic right testosterone now the topics now the topics which are for today it's not only which is related to the physiology but time to time i'll keep on telling you the importance of this in, in real life and what exactly okay 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 yeah so i'm keeping it on no problem so time to time i'll keep on telling you about that why these hormones are so important and at times it is like an investment right when the money is gone so then there is no point in crying right when when the money is there so we should we should learn how to save it same thing is for human body and this is where we if we don't put a kachra petrol in our bike or in our car right so so our body is so much more precious na so here it is the testosterone which is like a primary primary hormone we write hormone like this right for those who are attending today for the first time right so we write the hormones everywhere will be writing hormone like this and receptors like this right so these two things will keep on coming this way and so this is the primary hormone for males right now interestingly when we talk about embryology in the first 6 weeks the reproductive tissue for male as well as female they both are same right there is no differentiation but it is the week 7 and suddenly it is the y component right of that chromosome that it is the y chromosome which starts initiation of development of testis right by the way when we write like this testis so this is one singular and when we say e so this means we are talking about two testis to remember instead of i i wrote over here as one so that we don't have to remember it's like some ease to our brain so whenever we write t s t r i s so this is i but we write it like wrote it like one so that means we are dealing with one test is right okay this is importance when when in report sometimes you see someone has written like this that okay right test is when it is written like this you know that this is technically incorrect right because this e this means two testes right so it's okay it is easy to understand right but but still why why shouldn't we be very accurate right so that's why singular plural it matters it matters it really matters if you have prepared some presentation and on and at international level you are giving that presentation where such mistakes they are taken into consideration right so that's that's what we talk about okay so here it is that on week 7 there is development of testis now when the testis develops right as it develops the first thing which it will do is it will do is it will start releasing the hormone testosterone right testosterone now this testosterone will stimulate the development of male urogenital urogenital 
area plus the external genitals. Right? Male urogenital area or we can say track plus external genitals. And once they develop, right? So, in this important part is that the test is which we are talking about. Right? But this test is, is in abdomen. Right? I am putting a star on it. Because in pathology, we will be talking about so many, this, this concept at so many places. It is the testis which is in abdomen. And it remains in abdomen. But when it is 8th, ninth month of pregnancy, it is at that point when the testis start descending. It starts descending and all the way from abdomen, it goes down. There is inguinal canal. It passes through the inguinal canal. And here is the scrotum and it drops into the scrotum. Same thing happens on the opposite side. Right? So this is inguinal canal. Inguinal canal. And that's the scrotum. Right? Now skin of the scrotum, it is thrown into so many folds. This is very vital because testis will be doing what? Testis will be producing the sperms. Now those sperms, they are extremely temperature sensitive. Extremely temperature sensitive. So that's why this scrotum will be taking care of that temperature. So if this testis is anywhere into the abdomen or trapped into the inguinal canal, then yes, there is a problem. Right? So... This is a normal phenomenon. Normally it happens and it would be named as testicular descent or the descent of testis. Right? It is what is called as the testicular descent. Testicular descent. So many theories are there that why should it descend? Right? Some of the theories, right? Some of the theories they say that uh, maybe because of in abdomen all those organs are developing. So that's why they push the testis, right? So, uh, there is increased abdominal pressure, maybe because of, say, all those developments, right? Pressure. I'll write it for proper pressure. Or, it could be because of, say, this is what is called as gubernaculum, right? Just remember this word, gubernaculum. Gubernaculum is like a band which actually pulls the testis down along this path right so this is this much is sufficient to know at this point of time all and and one more thing right then when we are telling about one testis it is also called as the testicle it it means the same they both mean the same okay and important is that it occurs into eighth to ninth month so that at the point time of birth it is into the scrotum right this is a normal phenomenon yes yes considering first semester that's why i'm not picking up those words like cryptorchidism etc because we'll we'll be taking that thing in detail about all the types of hernia also all all those things into when we'll be talking about pathology right right now we learn we focus purely on a normal, proper system. Okay. All right. Now, fetal ovaries. Right. There are ovaries. Even these ovaries, they produce testosterone. Right. But all these are in very, very small quantity. It is almost negligible. Very, very less quantity. So, they are actually very negligible. Right now, we will not be talking about premature birth, etc. As I said, we will be focusing purely on the normal things, right? Because the moment we talk about premature birth, straight away we will be deviating from this topic completely. So, that's why we will we'll not be talking about those things, right? Regarding cryptorchidism or undescended testis or, or hernia, all different types of hernia, they will come in pathology, okay? All right. So now at puberty, right, at puberty what happens? 
you know this path now to very properly that there is hypothalamus right and then this hypothalamus that is where this is anterior pituitary anterior pituitary which is a for a so that means it is eddy right Numeters, that means it is glandular and if it is glandular that means it has got two things right that was like acidophilic and the basophilic in acidophilic it was leading to what growth hormone and second was like that prolactin and basophilic was we remembered it like fat right f was follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone a was acth and t was tsh and this is our prime focus today right that means if it is basophilic it will be staining blue and say or purple so that's the idea so this gives the entire part and and one more thing because hypothalamus and anterior pituitary right the communication between both of them is h h portal system right deliberately i wrote it in short because you now know it very well that it is hypothalamo hypofacial hypofacial is another name of pituitary right so this is hypofacial so hypothalamo hypofacial portal system it is what it is nothing but these are the blood capillaries and that's how it works just to remind that the posterior pituitary is like a neurohypophysis so that it is like an extension of hypothalamus in into all the way into the posterior pituitary so they it's like hypothalamus will produce and will simply put say oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone and it will tell posterior pituitary that boss you just store it over there and it will when i say release it in blood right where is it stored that specific name was the dilated axon where it stores is called as the herring body right h e double r i n g herring body okay see i am i am not answering Amanna, right now i am not answering it because if we say what will happen if a child born in seventh month well nothing would happen nothing would happen it is like we have to put it in, into incubator rest of the processes they will continue normally right but i am not going into that detail because in that case we'll be deviating from the topic okay and and for any of such things you can surely you can surely send a mail right because then i can comfortably answer or as i said why don't you put these questions even into chat so that it is beneficial to everyone because i was watching that in chat hardly there were one or two uh, one or two uh, say questions which was quite less but doesn't matter okay now in testes right there are seminiferous tubules semini various tubules right highly coiled structure highly coiled right and in these seminiferous tubules there are few cells and we need to know the name of that cell it is what is called as the leydig leydig cells right leydig cells now this leydig cell what they really do the raw material was cholesterol right that was the cholesterol so important right this cholesterol it gets converted to testosterone right it is this cholesterol which gets converted to testosterone and this thing is stimulated so this plus that means it is stimulated by lh lh is what luteinizing hormone right luteinizing hormone hormone will write like this i'll i'll keep on using different colors i know you like so luteinizing hormone right so cholesterol will be converted to testosterone this is like a final output but in between there are some important molecules which we need to talk about right two important two important 
components right which we must talk about because they will be related to some important steps one was d h e a right yesterday we talked about yeah and yeah, that's right uh see i'll i'll take a break for just one minute see the question why this question has been asked it's like i'm not insulting you but when i'm telling that we are discussing a complete normal system then why this question should come that why precocious pseudo probability occurs we can answer it very well but in that case someone think about the first semester student who is trying to understand everything in its complete normal way this question should have been appropriate had it been asked when we'll, we are discussing pathology right but friends please keep patience the importance is important part is that at times yes i know that you are very intelligent and you know so much right and and i am not really insulting anyone but there is a something what is called as the system system is like when we are dealing with normal right when we are dealing with normal think about why why i am taking this extra 2 minutes right yeah that's okay but but just because i i always feel that there has to be an absolute discipline it's like say you you might be knowing 10 things but when it comes to that when something is going on it is exactly like music right it is exactly like in musical concert if you are listening to one song then suddenly you won't pop up and stand and will say okay give me the electric guitar and then i'll start playing in between no you will not do that right if you will not do that then why over here think about and and i'm telling you no problems you definitely put these things in chat but before even writing because see it happens like the moment you type something the camera is here but the chat is on over here it is it is on the second screen and i'm writing on the third screen now in my peripheral vision right and peripheral vision say it is like this peripheral vision is is always powerful right in our retina right there is a central vision and then there is a peripheral vision so this peripheral vision is very powerful everyone so even when when you study something right so you are watching that topic into the center but your peripheral vision is powerful you'll start picking up those keywords this is the basic principle of understanding that about the brain mapping how you can really work really learn faster and and you can remember so surely it happens like in my peripheral it happens that screen has got refreshed some some new thing has come now sheer curiosity my my eyes would go over there and when when it is there so i can't stop myself to answer it right so please do it that way that unless it is bare necessary right right otherwise literally with cool mind just listen right and then i'm telling you put the questions in 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 that chat uh, i mean chat means no no chat is the wrong word comments right comments i'm sorry i i i meant my meaning was to you put the, it in comments because when you put it in comments so everyone would would be able to uh, get the benefit worst case no problems send a mail to me and you must have noticed that i try to answer almost all the mails as much as possible you know even if they are in hundreds i answer right i spare two three hours extra for that but yes i do answer right so rarely it must have happened that you have sent a mail and i have not answered i i normally don't do that that's why maybe probably the sunday has been kept right so please 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 right i i don't wish to turn the chat off when you guys are so good so then why to do it right so please manage it okay thank you thank you so this is d h e a d h e a was we said di h was hydro right e was dihydro epi and a was androsterone right dihydro epi androsterone yesterday we talked about it in depth and this was getting converted to what 
it was getting converted to that name and ross right and ross then number 10 right and the full name is andros ten and dion it is okay right when when we are so fluent but to remember when we remember it like andros 10 ad 1 so now when you speak it so andros ten and dion so it becomes much easier right you don't forget that's the whole idea so here is the entire name andros then 10 ad on right so and and i told you I am I'm teaching you exactly the way I learned, how I remembered. And yes, I was finding it so difficult to remember such names, right? Aaj to yaad rahe but after three days, five days, lost, right? Same thing happened in, in pharmacology. Yes, it was. But then figured out a method that how to remember. See, when it will come to cardiac auscultation, right? I'll actually, on, on the mic, I'll say, whoosh, whoosh. so it is like, we used to do that, right? My my friends would recollect that we used to take, say, we used to say, okay, stethoscope in, in his ears and then take the that chest piece and then make the sound and then we'll say, okay, bull, which disease I'm trying to mimic? We'll actually do it, right? And I would insist that you also try to do that because then it will create a picture in your brain that this is what is happening to that mitral wall, this is what is happening to that ventricle, right? Pressure is more so that upper chamber is straining so much. Right? All those things you will be able to visualize. Importance when you will be diagnosing it in the medicine. Okay. All right. So this is Andros tenendion and it is Andros tenendion which gets converted to testosterone. And this testosterone in between there was a need of 17 beta h s d right h s d h s d so we remember it like that it is dehydrogenase right not giving water right so we say it is hydroxy s is always steroid right and and d is dehydrogenase now in order to remember it if effectively when you, you try to revise, you just see this symbol and you just see this 17. Trust me, you won't have to remember anything else. Because even when you'll close your eyes and you'll say that, okay, that glass, so it means dehydrogenous and 17, rest of the things would be filled up automatically, right? 17 beta HSD will come by itself, right? Because our brains, they are super sharp to for all these fillers. So that's how... You, you can learn very effectively and, and at the same time with precision, right? And, and those who, have, who are with us for, for the first time, for them, say there is, there is one film which is on brain mapping, right? There is one film mastering, there are in fact four films, mastering the brain, right? Those films, they, they are very old. I think I, I posted them about a year back year back and and the duration of those film is three or three minutes five minutes just that much but in every film right part one part two part three part four right in every film there are some some very simple things like one is like just commit yourself that you will drink three liters of water every day now what's the logic the logic is put your brain into that discipline now three liter of water is not a big thing but just try to do that one day, two day, three day. On the fifth day, suddenly you will find that Are, aaj itna kaam tha, itni padhai ki. and then at the end of the day at 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the night when you will calculate, you will suddenly realize Are, in the entire day I haven't consumed even one liter of water. It happens. Right? So this is the day the brain goes into that disciplined state. Suddenly you will find that that transformation is is so miraculous and in in one of the film as i said that in that race of rabbit and turtle why turtle won it's it's okay we say that okay because rabbit was overconfident but at the same time if you remember that turtle was going at a slow speed right but it was the consistency if you are consistent trust me no one can beat you in this world what we really lack is consistency 
if you have decided that yes i'll be studying just for one hour right not more just for one hour but that one hour i'll be giving my heart and soul let rest of the world go to khadda who cares right but this one hour is mine and for that one hour with complete focus when you study you'll find that you are miles ahead as compared to anyone right so that's that's so important give your heart and soul i'm not telling that you study for 10 hours 12 hours i myself has never studied that much but when it comes to that one hour whatever whatever is happening that one hour is mine and in that it is like literally as if that entire book is getting dissolved into your brain that's what really happens and then you remember it for such a long duration and the best thing is then you try to speak it to others start start talking in that language right and and that's where and when when the exam would come there won't be any stress because the moment question paper would come in front of you things will start pouring into your brain right and you'll be answering very happily that's what really happens in fact truly speaking uh, i think i have not talked about it but in one of the exam of department of telecommunication right it was a very interesting exam i appeared for just before some time and uh, say it was pretty tough exam right of department of telecommunication some of the questions they were asked about the electronics and when i was in 10th standard i was i was i used to make some circuits and and uh, all those burglar alarm and everything so i started remembering ki okay 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 that was how the capacitors that is 1 upon c is equal to 1 upon c1 plus 1 upon c2 that is when they are in series and what happens when the resistors they are in parallel all those things and could calculate all those answers so many things about the transistors or semiconductors etc it was there very interesting so there were some questions on sonar right okay so coming back to our topic say uh, where were we yeah we were there on that 17 beta hsd or hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase right now as we say that this testosterone which is produced this is not fully utilized 100% in fact only a small portion is kept free for the free or it is called as the unbound for the action this is the free or the unbound part which is for the action and it is this part which reaches all the tissues and it will be performing the the effects what about rest that is all majority that is bound it is bound to all those proteins bound to proteins now it's not like a waste it's not but they act like a reservoir so whenever it is needed right once again they would be unbound and they can play a role into the system right this tells us that as such all these hormones they are needed in very less quantity as compared to the amount of production right so over here if this unbound binding part is also if affected so that means those hormones will be pouring into very large quantity and they will be leading to some hyperactive states right so over here it will be reaching to tissues like say seminal vesicle right it will reach to bones prostate prostate gland bones muscles etc uh let's do one thing see because there will be so many words like seminal vesicle lapididymis etc so well, let let me draw a brief about the entire male reproductive system for seniors it they will be knowing it ah uh, now no one is typing so let the let the chat be on you all guys are good yeah so so why to fight it's okay let it be on right so what i was telling is that say let let's understand the male reproductive system right so that we are comfortable with all the names right so so that there is absolute clarity so here is 
the urinary bladder. Okay. This is the urinary bladder. At the base of the urinary bladder, right, there is there is prostate, right? And from urinary bladder, the urethra would be going. Now there would be membranous urethra, bulbous urethra, etc. That's okay. But this is this is like basically urethra. Okay. I, I'll I'll keep on writing also. So this is prostate gland, right? And that's penis in which there will be urethra. Now for for the reproductive organs. Right, things would start from say testis. So this is testis, right? One sided, that's why we have written I. Right? There'll be all seminiferous tubules and then it will be coming out right like this, right? That comma shaped, and this is what is called as the epididymis. Epididymis. That's over here. From epididymis, right, it would travel all the way. It is what is called as the vas deferens, and it will go all the way up like this. And then, say, there would be ureters, so it will be going over the ureters. So, right now, I'm not drawing ureters uh, just to avoid the complication. But remember, it will go like this and it will open into, say, prostate. In between, so, so this is what is called as the vas deferens was deference also called as the ductus deference right it means the same I'll, I'll write it down right ductus deference over here right there would be a small portion it is what is called as the seminal vesicle vesicle means vessel right so it is called as the seminal vesicle vesicle means vessel vessel means container right not the blood vessel right so these are the organs now their functions are if we start straight away from the testis testis function is to make sperms right to make sperms but these sperms are they mature not necessarily right it just makes sperms plus to produce sex hormone Right, so that is testosterone. So this is testis. Now, when it comes to epididymis, it will store those sperms. Right, so over here it is the sperm storage, but at the same time, plus there is one more thing, and that is sperm maturation. Right, so it's sperm storage and sperm maturation. So here they mature. Right. And then starts the journey, right? This is highly coiled and then starts the journey. They start all the way to vas deferens. Now, in vas deferens, obviously, it is just a path. So, it carries those sperm, right? Now, yes, if you have studied this reproductive system, you might say that the internal lining of vas deferens, it leads to some storage of sperms also yes definitely even some of the sperms they get matured over there yes but we are understanding in a very basic way right so that's why i'm just highlighting some main points because i know there are some extra points also but we are not trying to make things complex even if you understand this it will make your concept what we are about to discuss crystal clear so this seminal vesicle seminal vesicle it is a vessel it is a container so what it will do it will store those sperms right now these sperms obviously all the way they traveled over here so here there are mature sperms so here it is they store sperms but one more thing right they store sperms plus it will secrete seminal fluid so when the semen is secreted in which there are lots of sperms, right, that seminal fluid, it is prepared over here and it is prepared into the prostate gland, right. So that is seminal fluid is over here and then prostate gland 
that will also produce but obviously pro prostate gland will produce seminal fluid in large quantities seminal fluid because it adds the volume right i'm i'm that's why i'm not going into too much detail we are just going for this much right about the cooper's gland etc it will deviate us so right now i put it it into the comment right i i'll answer it over there just put it into comment okay so this is because when you ask this question it means you know about it right so okay so this is the entire path which would be affected right let's see how it is affected so keep this picture in mind that the sperms they are produced right they mature they move all the way stored and then they are released right and obviously over here there are all those tissues right which leads to erection they are the erectile tissue and that's where the erection occurs and the semen along with the sperms they are ejaculated okay now as we said that it is the tissues right the tissues which are affected so when it comes to that testosterone right what happens on those tissues right what exactly they do say it is this testosterone which would which would be acting right in fact arrow should be in other direction testosterone will be acting on the on those tissues right this is like direct effect right? it is like a direct effect but this testosterone it it gets converted into dihydrotestosterone so there is one component testosterone and second is dihydro testosterone right so this this will also act now in order to get dihydrotestosterone we need 5 alpha reductase right this is enzyme right so 5 reductase as comes so that means it is enzyme and now both of them they will be acting on tissues how do they act same standard our that this is the cell wall when there is cell wall so there would be a receptor right so this is a receptor this receptor is where the testosterone will go this is the receptor where dihydro testosterone will go right and they will lead to intracellular actions right so that's how it will be working because it will release all those intracellular proteins and then their effects and everything would start idea is that everything is happening via blood now this is this testosterone is very very important say up when it comes to testosterone the image which comes is that yes okay it is for sex characters right? that is even true also that it leads to say primary sex characteristics so in which there is increase in the size of penis scrotum right and in fact there is increased libido all these are primary sex characteristic because these characteristics they are needed for the reproduction right when it comes to secondary sex character it means they are not needed for they are need not needed for the reproduction say for example hair so they are growing on to the face chest right axilla pubis so it has got it has got nothing to do with the process of re reproduction but it has got something very important right and say in case of larynx which leads to that deepening of the voice right of voice why why these these were needed say in in the theory of in, in the evolution right if you see discovery channel or if you see national geographic right those lions they are there right they fight 
Now, when they fight, sometimes two lions are there and their lionesses are there. Right? Okay. I, 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 let's do some, some lionesses are there, but then a big lion comes. Right? It is with huge face. Right? So many hairs. And that other lion will simply walk off. Right? All these secondary sex characteristics, they are important for that purpose because it was, it is like a fight. So when we'll be discussing the psychiatry, right, you'll find that these things matter. These things matter in a very classical way. Now, there is one very interesting film, very interesting. The whole film was like, say, the screen was divided into two parts. Again, this, this was actually shown in one of my films also. Right? Maybe it was way back, about six, eight months back. Over here, it is there in one of the, in one of the films. But the screen was divided into two parts. And one, one, this shot, it was taken at some poles. When, when the penguin, you know, those penguins, right? One penguin was moving like Mara Marasa, right? And then suddenly he watches another penguin. It right? obviously it must be a female penguin. And straight away, right, his body posture stayed, changed. That penguin, right, his body posture changed and then he started walking in, in superb style. Right. The second portion, so this was at some poles, North Pole or South Pole, somewhere it was there. The second was the shot which was from New York, right, in one street. And, and then that street was shown like, like this, right. So one, one person, he was coming over here in very mara marasa that way but then as he took the turn right there was one gorgeous female which was coming and instantly the entire posture changed then it was compared that there was not much of the difference between this penguin and that gentleman there was not much of the difference this is actually what is called as the body language right it is called as the body language now, body language is something which you see straight away. But the advanced version of this is what is called as the micro-expressionism. And micro-expressionism is one of that modality that is with when high speed, high frame rate cameras, when someone is interrogated and a question is asked, and then if you go by frame by frame by frame, right, frame by frame, and then when you see when this question is asked, then what happened? What happened to his right shoulder, left shoulder, eyes, lips? What was that movement? And from that you decipher. This is one of the very fine, very fine investigative thing, right? What is called as micro expression. But the idea is that what is the base of all these things? The base of all these things, friends, it is hormones. How these hormones, they are acting. How they are acting, hormones and neurotransmitters, just it's a game of hormones and neurotransmitters, right? So we'll be talking about more when we'll be really talking about the psychiatry. So for one week, it would be a pleasure, right? You'll, you'll enjoy it and uh, the psychiatry and one week will be for forensic medicine also. I, I think uh, those who are studying abroad, I think my guess is that, that you don't have forensic medicine, right? I'm not, uh, perhaps it is not there. Doesn't matter. Still, even if it is not there, still I wish you learn. You'll, you'll learn a lot. And, and it is very, very amazing. Okay. Uh, libido is that desire. Desire to be with the, with the opposite sex. Right? So that desire also it increases because all these things they are related to to the say brain mentality brain functions right it is completely a brain function okay now we are talking about say testosterone right apart from primary and secondary sex characteristic there is something more it is what is called as the anabolic effect very powerful and very important and sometimes this effect is very much misunderstood especially those who are going into the gym 
right? They say, just take this anabolic steroid. Yeah, you can. One can take one. They'll, they, you'll find that that lanky guy suddenly within three months, four months, six months, right? He is like a Hercules. But at what cost, right? So if anything, if it's now you'll understand, right, as we'll proceed, that because it is the artificially generated those steroids, right, how harmful are they as they progress into their life? So this anabolic effect, what really happens is, is it affects those long bones, right, onto those epiphyseal plates. Okay, great. Then it is very nice. Forensic, if it is there, so then so it is best. Very good. Very good. Okay. So anabolic effect is, say, those long bones, right? In long bones, you know that there is epiphyseal plate, right, which is like a growing end. Right? It is this epiphyseal plate where it would be affecting, this testosterone will be affecting. So that's what leads to strong and long bones. This means that in case if anything goes wrong to testosterone, it will lead to disturbance in the long bones and such persons, right, their height would suddenly decrease right it would be like they will be of decreased height or their development won't be proper their bones will be weaker their bones will be shorter right so this is so vital another effect is say it will give like broad shoulders again the bone development plus Anabolic effect gives powerful muscles, right? So that muscle mass increases, and this is classically manifested into the form of arms and legs, right? Arms and legs. Some things I'll say very bluntly, very bluntly. It is at times needed. Again, I'm not insulting anyone, right? But guys. Those who are going into the gym, you must have seen that you focus so much on an upper body. Definitely focus on the lower body also. Because at times we see that, that the upper body is so strong and the legs are like those matchsticks, right? And, and trust me, females, they note this, okay? All right. Anabolic effects. Another effect is that it gives aggressive behavior. Right? Aggressive behavior. And one of the important point before we miss is plus, it leads to increased erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis. What's this erythropoiesis? Nothing. Right? RBC production. So it leads to increased hemoglobin. Right? Input into simple words. So these are the major effects of the testosterone, right? So in testosterone, everything it goes into the form of a balance, which was like say from hypothalamus was going into this anterior pituitary, right? Anterior pituitary, which was releasing the hormones for the testes. So over here, hypothalamus was releasing that gonadotropin releasing hormone correct and then anterior pituitary was releasing that luteinizing hormone right and then it is it was the testosterone testosterone okay testosterone <laughs> what am i doing right let me write it properly testosterone now it is okay Right, so that is released. So, if this is increased, right, if it is increased, so then there would be a negative feedback mechanism, right? It will inhibit gonadotrophin releasing hormone, it would re inhibit the luteinizing hormone. And if, if this testosterone is decreased, right, so it will lead to stimulation of GnRH. And it would stimulate the luteinizing hormone. So the thing is, when will in in 
the next in female hormones one thing which we'll see that it is the luteinizing hormone which keeps on fluctuating right there would be massive fluctuation so during ovulation there would be a big spike right for fsh and lh there would be big spike in case of males this luteinizing hormone is almost steady right there is very less variation so remember this part right the level of lh is relatively steady right relatively so there won't be a big spikes like females right because in female that entire menstrual cycle is based on this luteinizing hormone because this hormone is so powerful because he fires for during that ovulation because of this that that uh, ovum that is released and there starts the entire process so that's why in case of female you'll see that how the game is between two hormones how that estrogen and progesterone they'll be handling this entire thing okay so one point is what one should do right when we know that this testosterone is so important and and when up to the age of 25 30 nothing happens but then starts the sharp decline in the testosterone now to even this this age has even decreased right because of so many other factors right this level sharply decreases this is where see was you all are doctors right when you are doctor to you should understand you are your first patient you should take care of yourself first so to keep and some things are like we we feel shy in asking or we don't even ask anyone right unnecessarily here and there that that kisi se pucha and and if the misconceptions they are fed into the brain khalas khatam right so we don't do that right why not to handle everything scientifically so to keep testosterone level on level normal right i'm writing normal not high right it has to be normal because high is also bad one thing every day right not more i'm just telling 20 minutes right at least 20 minutes do the exercise and divide it very scientifically in the form of endurance right if one day you are doing endurance second day you do weights and you can always google i'm giving you one very interesting point it is what is called as the kettlebell right kettlebell is basically a russian exercise and those comrades they used to do it but kettlebell is where there is a big iron ball and then there is handle right this exercise it it actually makes your entire body upper body and the lower body so strong that you do it do it today you'll get the benefits for whole of your life right this is that beautiful no doubt there if you are going in gym to there are other weights also i i am not against any of them this is i'm just telling what what i have done on myself and yes i found that this is so powerful very powerful kettlebells the second thing is never be deficient of proteins right protein third try to keep your stress level as low as possible because in that case lower stress level right is possible by proper planning proper planning plan it right why to stress yourself unnecessary for the exams plan right from the beginning and you'll find that everyone would be having stress but if you can handle it smartly you'll be top of the world right fourth vitamin d3 very important don't miss it and fifth and most important whatever happens to the world you should be getting a quality sleep quality sleep 
when we'll be discussing sleep at length right at that point i'll tell you that how it actually affects the testosterone level also right so these are some of the basic things right and uh, and say if a patient comes to you right with any of such conditions which i am now about to write it should click in your mind that yes the testosterone level is going down so you have to advise him accordingly right so if this testosterone level drops right what should occur now because you have learnt everything you'll find it that everything has a meaning decrease bone density true because it was handling it was acting on those epiphyseal plates now there is decreased bone density yes it is because of that minerals right they are getting affected fatigue because muscle mass would decrease decrease muscle mass right and when the muscle mass is decreased immediately the first thing is that there would be the central obesity central obesity right and this central obesity means those big tummies right big tummies that big tummy is nothing but what's called as the visceral fat right visceral fat i i always tell this visceral fat is nothing but say here is your bichara poor heart right and and this heart when it is surrounded by all that fat and this fat is imposing so much of pressure so this is like you are you are driving your superb ferrari with the hand brakes on right how much load will be put extra load will be put on the engine of that car same thing is over here this heart is going to work very sincerely right whether yours or someone else's but this heart right is going to work sincerely but because of that visceral fat the fat which is surrounding the viscera it is so dangerous and and when it is say coming out in the form of that tummy so imagine how much is inside right so don't let that thing happen and obviously the last thing is decreased hemoglobin right decreased hemoglobin it's because testosterone is taking part into that is is stimulating erythropoiesis so it definitely affects right apart from this as it affects even the mood also so there would be decreased focus there would be decrease in the memory right these are very important things and at times decrease focus decrease memory irritability right irritability these things can give you a very important clue that this could be something which is happening into your patients right so that's why so so vital are these things and uh, where was say we talked about dhea dihydroxyapiandrosterone right and the uh, androstenendion right androstenendion right both of them they were getting produced into the zona reticularis right so that is also where it is occurring right zona reticularis that is in the, th in the third layer of adrenal cortex and that's what was leading to that testosterone correct but the point is that whether it is male or it is female the quantity right quantity is very less right that's what we discussed yesterday that was our last topic right the quantity is very less yeah does fat is deposited on tummy well it is not on tummy it is inside right there it also gets deposited on to the say subcutaneous fat there is some subcutaneous fat but when it is getting deposited over there the inside portion that is so high right one hour of cricket well say it it totally depends whether you are a baller batsman because at times it happens that say i don't play cricket right i don't play i i was i i used to play table tennis right mm. simply because of one reason because highly active and and at any point of time you just can't relax and it it was like a game which is giving you physical as well as mental agility 
right? Because the tennis ball, within split second, it comes back to you, right? And if the player in front of you is good, right? So then to it is like within five seconds, you might have exchanged 10, 12 shots, right? It goes that fast. So I'm not the right person to comment on cricket. I do watch, right? But it's like just for fun. Okay. So that was about the testosterone part. Let's move on to estrogen and progesterone. The female sex hormones. So estrogen and progesterone. Now, say testosterone to was very easy. Over here, in case of females, now this is like a real integrated system when estrogen comes when progesterone comes and on top of it still there is luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone they are already there and then the entire process of that ovulation and what really happens right so just say that's the uterus from both the sides there would be the fallopian tubes right and then that's the fimbrial end over there, there is ovary, that's a fimbrial end, there is ovary, right? This is uterus, uterus, and then there would be the cervix, vagina, and then that's the fallopian tube, right? And here is the ovary, right? In ovary, there would be ovarian follicles, right? Ovarian follicles. And in that follicle, there would be the oocyte, right? So every month, one of the follicle that would be released and it will lead, it will travel all the way in the hope of fertilization and then the entire process works. So this is what we are now about to discuss, right? So starting with, say, the estrogen, the most vital component for a female that is estrogen every male should understand this thing very properly right well you are, you are doctors that's right but yes when it comes to the entire cycle right today i'll keep on telling you that why there is there are some mood swings in case of female right why it happens and it is so scientific and it is so logical. And yes, as, as a male, it becomes like your responsibility to take care of your female during those phases. right? So that's what we, we shall also be talking about just for a minute or two. But could be an important thing because in, in BJ Medical College, when I was teaching this, after many years, one of I met one couple, right? They said, Kisar, aap ye, he, they told me my name. I said, yes. They said, Kisar, we were your students way back, right? About 10 years back. I was very happy. I said, okay. So then he said that, sir, on that day, we laughed on you, right? We laughed on you about... Uh, See, central obesity means it is like it is not only into the abdomen, it is even into the entire body. Because in body, fat deposition is never localized. It, it, if it is showing up in abdomen, it means it is lots and lots into other organs. Okay, So that's why I included it. So then they said, on that day, when you talked about this, so we felt that what, what are we talking about? But we understood its importance after years together. So, uh, okay, put it put it into the comment, right? Uh, Monica, what what you wrote? Just put it into comment because its answer is a bit lengthy, right? So all these things. The questions, in case if I am not answering, just definitely put it into comments, right? I'll happily answer it. Okay, coming back to, because otherwise we won't be able to finish it. And I want to include these topics into your tomorrow's test, right? 
and as now you have permitted me for 60 questions so now I'll, I'm having free hand I can ask you so many questions okay all right so coming back to this estrogen there are there are three major types of estrogen one what is called as the estradiol estradiol very active right this is a very active component and in fact it is this component which is produced by ovaries and it leads to all the primary and the secondary sexual characteristics so this is one we'll be discussing all three of them then comes estrone 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 east one huh? estrone right that is second and the third is estriol 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 these are the three types this one is most active so we'll start with it and gradually this estrone and estriol because they are they are the part when the menopause comes so at that point they will come into picture so we'll we'll discuss it at last so over here it's what leads to that sex characteristics right in the form of primary in the form of primary and the secondary sex characteristics right primary sex characteristic it means those things which are necessary for the reproduction so it means over here it is the ovulation that is vital right it is the ovulation which is vital and second is the menstrual cycle right because regular menstrual cycle it indicates one important thing that the cycle of those hormones right it is coming in in a very precise way that means system they are working absolutely fine those secondary characteristics they are for the purpose of that is the development and the growth growth of say those uh, uterus vagina right then the breast enlargement then say some fat deposits right fat deposit especially into the hip region then uh, say thighs so or in, in so they they why they are happening because they are like preparing that when during pregnancy all these fats right they will be utilized the breast enlargement because it will be for the breast feeding so that's how the secondary characteristics they are included so remember primary means something which is vital for the reproduction okay apart from say ovaries Yes, we'll see that estrogen is something which is getting released from, right, you know, adrenal cortex. Right? You remember there was there was that enzyme aromatase, right? No doubt we'll be we'll be discussing it, but aromatase which was converting testosterone into the estrogen. Then adipose tissue, all of them they release in very small quantity, very negligible quantity, right? But yes, they do release. Right? Here we need to talk about placenta. So during pregnancy, right? So this is something which is working in pregnancy. So during pregnancy, it is the placenta which will be releasing estrogen and progesterone, right? So important. Right, so it is like estrogen and progesterone. That would be its in function. So before puberty, right, before puberty, everything was like that hypothalamus, right? From hypothalamus, same path that hypothalamo, hypofacial, portal system right which are blood capillaries and it will be sending message to this anterior pituitary and we are dealing with only the fsh and lh right they are releasing into the small quantity because over here there is gonadotrophic releasing hormone that is also in a very small quantity so it's not so they are completely devoid of but there is very less quantity at least today i tell you you guys are uh, so disciplined i'm really happy about it say even when you are asking question on just my one word instantly monica you said okay and that's it i really like this approach right because i can watch the entire chat is so silent 
सो नाइस ऑफ यू थैंक यू ओके सो वेर वर वी या सो बिफोर प्यूबर्टी राइट दिस हाइपोथैलेमस इज रिलीजिंग लेस जी एन आर एच एंड दैट लीड्स टू लेस एफ एस एच एंड एल एच एंड एंड एट प्यूबर्टी राइट सो एट प्यूबर्टी देर वुड बी इंक्रीज इन इंक्रीज इन जी एन आर एच नाउ दिस इज पल्सेटाइल राइट इट इज पल्सेटाइल सो इट्स लाइक इट कीप्स ऑन सेंडिंग मैसेज टू दैट ओके follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone start your action right what they do they will be going that's the ovary in the ovary there is follicle right what is called as the ovarian follicle so that's the ovary and this is ovarian follicle there will be several of such follicles right but we are just picking one for our purpose and there would be the o site so i'm just writing o right if we really zoom this thing we we'll zoom this thing right and that's the ovarian follicle right this is ovarian follicle the the cells right these cells right these are what are called as the follicular cells correct follicular cells ovarian follicle so so name is ovarian follicle now there are two types of cells one is the theca cells and second is the granulosa cells now starts the real music everything will go in such a systematic way that when one level is rising then there will be second level will be decreasing everything will go now starts the real real music right see how it happens follicular cells as i said that there are say theca and the granulosa right granulosa cells cells now they are necessary for proper menstrual cycle right so over here whatever we discuss till this point now we'll implement it in the form of menstrual cycle right because menstrual cycle when we'll be implementing what we learned it will streamline everything that okay at what point what is needed right so first thing first okay first thing first the most vital event is the ovulation right so two weeks before and two weeks after we divide this entire cycle into two phases the first phase is called as the follicular phase follicular phase and the second phase is called as the luteal phase luteal phase so when we talk about let's say first we talk about a very important hormone and that is estrogen because it is actually the estrogen which which leads to a good mood of the female right she is very happy right actually she is very happy when the estrogen levels are high this is the reason that in menopause right when the estrogen levels they start dropping sharply that is where it is so much needed to take care of your female because when the estrogen levels are dropping that leads to irritability and no doubt so many other things but but when we talk about the mood part this is so important right so over here we'll draw that this estrogen level would be would be shooting high right it will it keeps on rising and then it rises and it rises during the phase of ovulation right then it drops then it drops okay regarding the progesterone so i'll i'll take a another color 
रिगार्डिंग द प्रोजेस्टरॉन प्रोजेस्टरॉन इज द हॉर्मोन फॉर सेकेंड हाफ राइट बिकॉज प्रोजेस्टरॉन इज टेलिंग दैट ओके आई प्रिपेयर द यूट्रस फॉर द फर्टिलाइ फॉर फॉर दैट एम्बेडिंग प्रिपेयरिंग इट फॉर प्रेगनेंसी सो प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन वुड से वॉट वॉट वुड आई डू इन द फर्स्ट हाफ राइट वेन द वेन द ओव्यूलेशन आकर्स वेन आफ्टर दैट वेन दैट ओवम ट्रेवल्स इफ इट फर्टिलाइज इज एंड देन वेन इट कम्स टू यूट्रस देयर द थिंग शुड बी रेडी सो दैट्स वाई ओवर हियर इट इज ऑलमोस्ट राइट एंड देन इट स्टार्ट राइजिंग एंड देन इट ड्रॉप्स so this is the hormone which is of second phase now i'll take another color for almost the entire session oh, this is i am use the same color that's different color ha huh. for the entire phase right the values they are almost same but just at the point of ovulation it spikes and then once again it goes back to normal this we are talking about luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormones so they will be spiking during ovulation right we'll understand all of them i just say this is what we were talking about progesterone and this we are talking about estrogen right so just keep this image in mind this lh lh is important because it controls it controls this menstrual cycle plus plus this is important it triggers it actually triggers the release of egg from the ovary that is what we call as ovulation right so it triggers and i'll be asking this question right it triggers release of egg right from ovary well you can you can say that i must have drawn these stars more than 60 times so in that case is that the paper well i don't know i'll be asking even other questions also but yes all those star mark questions they are important so they can upcoming exam so in 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 the follicular phase right in the follicular phase when the estrogen level is rising right estrogen level is rising say so because it is because of estrogen right? because because of estrogen we'll just see that why it occurs the the endometrium starts thickening right endometrium starts endometrium is it's a lining of the uterus it starts thickening and and then the progesterone it it those receptors they are getting prepared and there comes the progesterone which acts on it so here we are understanding that what really happens to uterus in the initial phase just it is like that its endometrium endometrium starts thickening right and this will lead to say progesterone progesterone receptors availability because then in the second phase that progesterone will come into picture and it will tell ke okay endometrium glands now you start firing right so that is what would be done into the second phase okay so estrogen which is during the follicular phase right so coming back to our the first phase the follicular phase let's write it here so in the follicular phase or the phase 1 phase 1 that estrogen right estrogen it will affect what it will affect the pituitary right it will affect the pituitary and that will lead to say decreased follicular stimulating hormone the negative feedback mechanism because estrogen level is constant there so it will tell the pituitary 
that there is no need, right? There is enough estrogen, so don't release. So it will keep a this is negative feedback. Right? So it will not tell the pituitary that you release follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. But just before ovulation, right? But before ovulation. The estrogen level is rising. Now, when the estrogen level rises, right? See, estrogen rises, it leads to something very interesting. The high level of estrogen will actually overstimulate. So, this leads to positive feedback, right? When the level of estrogen is less, so it is restricting follicle stimulating hormone. But when the estrogen level spikes, it leads to positive feedback and it makes the pituitary gland so sensitive that it releases large amount of FSH and LH. Right? Very interesting. So how rhythmical the entire thing is occurring. Over here it was decreased. So fine, everything was in weight state. And then the as estrogen level started rising, pituitary became oversensitive that's so much of estrogen okay now it is like i won't stop i'll also fire and it will send large amount of fsh and yeah yeah they are same right fsh and lh and that would lead to ovulation now once the ovulation is done right once it is done it starts the second phase and that phase is called as the luteal phase right that phase is called as the luteal phase now in luteal phase this would be interesting how how they will switch from estrogen to progesterone progesterone till this point was at a very moderate level but now already we talked about that see the platform is ready right the uterine wall endometrium right that has already been thickened right and there are these are the receptors these are the receptors which are ready so we will write it like this receptor and there comes there comes the progesterone right this progesterone comes and when the progesterone comes its effect is stimulation of endometrial glands stimulation of those endometrial glands now those glands when they are stimulated immediately it will lead to increased secretion right that is where the entire uterus is now getting prepared now this uterus is ready for implantation so it is just waiting that okay let that fertilized ovum come and the stage is set right also <clears throat> this progesterone right this progesterone will send a negative feedback mechanism to anterior pituitary right it will say now there is progesterone so drop the lh don't send right so this means now anterior pituitary right it will decrease this lh also all right so over here for the potential pregnancy stage is set Right, this is for potential pregnancy, the stage is set. So, this progesterone right, all, all these things, the combined effect, right? They will the progesterone which is getting released, right? In case if there is in case if there is no pregnancy, right? If there is no fertilization so what would happen that after some time right the progesterone level would drop when the progesterone level is dropping so now there is no one to stimulate those endometrial glands when so things endometrial breaks that entire preparation so it is this endometrial break and that leads to what's called as the menstruation.
and once again after menstruation the entire cycle would start again yes that's right that's right so yesterday we uh, talked about this cholesterol right they are they are what they are basically all of them they are steroid hormones correct steroid hormones so this cholesterol it gets converted to what we said that that you remember pregne no alone that is in pregnancy female is not alone right so that's how we try to remember pregnant alone and what is needed for this there was one very important enzyme which was needed and that was cholesterol cholesterol desmolase right cholesterol desmolase desmolase now this desmolase will come from it will come from that theca cells right in ovary there were two types of cell theca cell and those uh, follicular those which which were which was other i missed anyway so theca cells right so this theca cells they will lead to release of this cholesterol desmolase and and this pregnenolone will get converted to that entire 17 alpha hydroxy right and last name would remain the same so that would be pregne no right this is what is released ah then thank you <laughs> and finally this 17 alpha hydroxy pregnenolone right that would be converted to what we talked about dhea right dhea dehydro epi and and then dhea is converted to yes that is andros 10 adion right and ross 10 and dion right these are the same steps and then it would be converted to testosterone all all they are same right same steps but that's just from this point things would change right and that is that this testosterone is converted to that 17 beta estradiol estradiol and this is that active component and this is where that aromatase is needed this aromatase aromatase yeah it is it is needed right and this aromatase that is released by those granulosa cells right so that is by granulosa cells right that would release so this is that important point yes in between all those it also releases that 17 beta hsd right that is also by granulosa cells right this is 17 beta hsd hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase right that is what will convert right all those things but this is where it functions okay so as it is happening right this is all happening into the follicular phase right? this is all happening in the follicular phase so where it prepares and then it acts on uterus vagina then the bones all those target cells now in luteal phase right in luteal phase there is one more important point in luteal phase that ovulation has occurred right so ovulation has occurred so there is now drop in the LH luteinizing hormone and then those granulosa cells right? those granulosa cells they will say that now everything is getting low right that uh, cholesterol just a minute, right i'm not drawing this 
over here yeah so cholesterol is getting converted to see this pregnenolone right but this thing it also releases this granulosa cell it releases one more important thing it releases cholesterol side chain cleavage it is called as the s c c side chain cleavage enzyme this is a new thing right its name is like p450 s c c so side chain cleavage so basically it is an enzyme this works on cholesterol and that there starts the entire that pregnenolone cycle right now meantime granulosa cells as we we saw just above right we saw just above here these granulosa cells they are producing this 17 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase but these granular cells they also produce 3 beta HST which is used above right so they also produce 3 beta HST both of these are very versatile enzymes so over here granulosa also produces 3 beta HST and that is what acts on pregnant womb and what it will do it will lead to formation of progesterone so that's the reason that why there is more progesterone more progesterone in luteal phase as compared to anything else it is because of this cholesterol side chain cleavage enzyme which is completely extra and that is also taking part and it is leading to production of extra progesterone right that's the reason that we have got more progesterone in luteal phase as compared to the estrogen and then the things are easy right it goes into the blood and from blood it goes to those target tissues and it works got it yeah so estrogen progesterone they are important from this purpose now we talked about say estrogen and progesterone about that that yes they will be handling those sex characteristics that is primary and secondary but then there is something extra this is like a fact right that physiologically right i'm not telling physically physiologically females they are much powerful than males physiologically many reasons but but over here because we are discussing this say in female there are two sex characters you know, two sex hormones estrogen and progesterone and and they move with this this proper cycling in case of male there is only one that is testosterone in case of say female there is a separate path for reproduction and there is a separate path for urine urination for male there is only one path so even from physiological aspect you'll find that in case the females they are much stronger as compared to males this is the next point which is of so much of importance you must have seen that in females they suffer from less heart attack myocardial infection they are seen more atherosclerosis it is seen more in case of males cardiovascular system cvs right it is more involved in case of males it is because estrogen this estrogen it has got a very fine protective effect on cardiovascular system so that will lead to decreased atherosclerosis that would lead to decreased decreased myocardial infarction or the heart attack right the heart attack 
so that is less in case of females also estrogen has got that it keeps the bone density proper bone density keeps it proper and this is one of the reason that as the estrogen level drops as the female advances if the proper d3 etc is not given then then fractures they become very common right because it is handling for that bone strength bone density everything one another important point that it has got a very these estrogen and progesterone right they have got a very beautiful effect on the skin on the skin right it gives elasticity that is it gives a very supple skin and that skin that when when these sex hormones they start dropping that is what leads to wrinkles right? because it is taking care of that elasticity wrinkles uh yeah a pretty long answer uh, put definitely put it into chat right i'll i'll reply it at length so so elastic and uh, elasticity and wrinkles right they are they are like closely associated so elasticity and the beautiful skin that is a part of that sex hormones now what really happens in case of pregnancy now in pregnancy it is it is the placenta right that placenta which comes into picture so placenta is producing estrogen and progesterone but this is so in very raw form we are telling placenta is not producing this 17 beta estradiol right it is not producing this in fact it is producing estriol right estriol the second one which we were talking about it is producing estriol so then how this estriol is different progesterone is the same but see the beauty of the nature progesterone and estriol when they are combined together right they will prepare the breast for lactation right so that's where it will lead to that epithelium growth of the milk producing cells right so that increased so milk producing cells epithelium right that is what it will lead to that development so that is what really happens so this is where the estriol is different than that and in case of say when it comes to say menopause right this is where these sex hormones they start declining right 50 or more so now that's the ovary and in this ovary now there are no follicles no follicles no active follicles i should say right no active or no functional follicles so this means in such case there is there won't be any theca or granulosa cells right none so there won't be hormone so obviously this will lead to sharp decrease in that estradiol estradiol and that's what leads to all post menopausal symptoms like say hot flushes right night sweats irritability because all the beautiful things of estrogen which was there right now suddenly if it is devoid of it so it leads to such complication even the irritability mood swings they they become so high right and yes there is like hrt that is hormone replacement therapy right hormone replacement therapy but then for how long right so with this well things can be can be say delayed a bit but then everything comes at a cost right so over here 
it happens like that when when everything is dropping right so normal hormones now they are not getting released so there comes the adrenal cortex here comes the adrenal cortex that for whole life no one was asking him because telling that you are producing such small estrogen right so it is useless but now that comes into picture so it leads to that estrogen and this estrogen yes you must have guessed it is that third one and that is estron estron this is released right so it is in less quantity but that's what it is in the postmenopausal right that is what is what will try to keep the system as good as possible now what are the normal levels right because say in in your patient you'll you'll go for the assessment of these levels testosterone levels right etc they are checked so so in case of testosterone it is present in male as well as female right so in male it would be more and it is measured in say nanogram per 100 ml of blood so nanogram per deciliter around 17 or 18 years of age right there would be spike so in case of males say roughly 300 to even up to say 1200 there would be spike and then as from 19 plus onwards say it keeps on decreasing so from 240 to 950 you'll be getting that range but at any stage if it is around 300 so then it is good but when it falls more less than that so then it is called as the low testosterone and it's a problem in case of females yes there is testosterone right but it is about 20 to 75 right when 70 to 18 and then to it drops still further almost say 8 to say 40 50 right it, it drops to that level so for males right for males this is like minimum right that that is minimum two three more things what we talked about and they were like fsh right so in case of adult male right adult male there would be fsh and lh right almost because they'll be leading to release of testosterone so levels are almost same so they will not fluctuate much so here it is calculated in the form of international units per liter so it's roughly about 2 to 12 and this is also luteinizing or luteinizing hormone also 2 to 8 iu per l right whatever the value is which is it is pretty pretty steady that's not the case in case of females right so in case of females say early follicular phase right that is the phase when there is not much of the spike but in the mid cycle it will go high right ah uh, but if it drops naturally then why a problem uh, you mean to say these estrogen levels you are talking about i I'll, i'll wait for your okay so in in early follicular when we say this follicular stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone right they are like say about 3 to 10 right not not very spiky about 2 to 10 or 8 right roughly this is but in the mid cycle mid cycle this is where it matters it goes high right say four all the way up to say 25 that goes high luteinizing hormone yes that also goes high so these are the values which are to be seen right tremendously important and in the postmenopausal right the things are like if they are above 20 or here they are just above 15 so they are considered as okay right because it is it is expected that they would fall 
testosterone well any of the hormone right whether it is it is because of what's called as the aging right it is because of that aging so whether it is the testosterone or it is the estrogen anything if it is dropping right in this is in case of male and this is in case of females when it drops they they were vital to keep the body active right now with the decrease in these hormones there would be the adverse effects right though it is occurring occurring in its natural way but yes there, there would be adverse effects because they were important component it is exactly like the car when it is brand new and then as it runs more and more then there is something like wear and tear so though our human body is is effectively say prepared in a very very beautiful way right it has got tremendous capability for recovering but still at times we do abuse our body this is what is dangerous right say at times when i see some medicos smoking right smoking cigarettes etc i i feel so bad that that come i i take you to the anatomy museum and i'll show you those lungs studded with those carbon you see what it is like and then then you will never feel like touching the cigarette again right but well it happens so the point is that it is not so that what we talked about they are like very strict guidelines sometimes even females of the age of say 18 20 years 22 years right they say that there are some severe hormonal disturbances leading to severe disturbances into their cycles severe disturbances into their moods and so many other things right uh if i'll ask fill in the blanks right they will be very specific they will not be confusing at all right they'll be crystal clear so and it's okay in, in, in even if you say make any mistake in that why to worry right uh okay so so that's what is for today right so tomorrow we'll be having test of 60 questions right do prepare well and say wish you all the best for tomorrow's exam and thank you so much and we meet tomorrow good night take care and i'm placing this file into our shared cloud folder Right, just within a minute. All right. Thank you and bye-bye.